Hi guys, this video is going to cover the composition of the atmosphere, the depletion of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, the increase in the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere, and finally we'll think about evidence. Ending the video with a summary. If you've seen our video on the Earth's early atmosphere, you'll know that this early atmosphere consisted of high levels of carbon dioxide and water vapour, formed by the eruption of volcanoes. However, the Earth's atmosphere today is totally different, and two substances form 99% of this layer of gas that surrounds the Earth. These two substances are nitrogen and oxygen. In this diagram on the left-hand side, we can see different layers of what is known as the atmosphere, which are the layers of gases surrounding the Earth, which are held there by the Earth's gravity. Outside the atmosphere, we reach space. On the right-hand side, we have a pie chart showing the component parts of the Earth's atmosphere. You can see that it's dominated by one substance, as shown in blue, with the second substance in green still a considerable portion. These two chunks represent nitrogen and oxygen, and what's left is all the other gases found in the atmosphere. The largest proportion of the Earth's atmosphere is nitrogen, with a smaller amount of oxygen. Specifically, nitrogen accounts for 78% of the Earth's atmosphere. And as always for nitrogen, this exists as the diatomic N2 molecule, which we can see here. These N2 molecules are held together by a strong triple covalent bond. This triple covalent bond is very strong, which makes the N2 molecule very unreactive. This is why this gas can take up such a large proportion of the atmosphere, because it doesn't react with any other substances that you find there. Oxygen accounts for 21% of the Earth's atmosphere, and in the same way as for nitrogen, oxygen exists as the diatomic O2 molecule, this time held together by a strong covalent double bond. As we saw in our pie chart, there are some other gases in the atmosphere. However, these account for less than 1% in total, and individually, other gases such as carbon dioxide, CO2 or water vapour account for less than 0.1% of the Earth's atmosphere. This is a dramatic change from the early atmosphere, where these gases were dominant. Now, they're less than 0.1% each. So, what happened to all the carbon dioxide from the early atmosphere? This has disappeared. We say it's been depleted. And the carbon dioxide from the early atmosphere has been depleted due to absorption. For example, some carbon dioxide has been absorbed by the oceans. What we mean is that carbon dioxide that was previously in the atmosphere as a gas has dissolved into the water in the ocean, therefore reducing the amount of free carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. We know that carbon dioxide can be dissolved in water because this is how we form fizzy drinks. And these are fizzy because of a high level of dissolved carbon dioxide. The ocean isn't fizzy, but the presence of such a large amount of water mean that considerable amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere can be dissolved into the oceans. Another way in which carbon dioxide has been absorbed is by plants and algae. This is because plants and algae will take in carbon dioxide in order to carry out photosynthesis, and this is how they get their energy. We'll look at this in more detail in the next slide. But this is one reason why levels of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere fell. Carbon dioxide that was taken in by plants millions of years ago has led to the formation of limestone. This is because when plants, plankton or marine animals die in the oceans, they sink to the bottom and get buried under many layers of sediment. For example here, we can see the example of a fish skeleton which is under the sea. Over time, this skeleton gets buried under layers of rock and sand. Eventually, over millions of years, we can form what is known as sedimentary rocks, with coal and limestone forming from thick plant deposits. Sedimentary rocks form from layers of sediment in processes that take millions of years. Specifically, plants took in carbon dioxide during their lifetime. The carbon from this carbon dioxide is retained, forming rocks such as limestone and coal, where coal contains carbon and limestone contains both carbon and oxygen. Therefore, carbon dioxide that was previously in the atmosphere forms some of the rocks that we see today by being taken in by plants for the photosynthesis process. One way in which carbon dioxide can be absorbed is by plants during photosynthesis. Green plants and algae will take in carbon dioxide in order to produce oxygen in the photosynthesis process. 
This therefore will decrease the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But the process produces oxygen, therefore increasing the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. Photosynthesis is used by plants in order to create energy. And we can write out the full equation for the process, which is that a plant will take carbon dioxide and water and use this to form oxygen and also the sugar glucose. Glucose is what's broken down in respiration in order to provide the plant with energy. The process of photosynthesis requires light, which the plant will get from sunlight. We can also write out a symbol equation for the photosynthesis process. Carbon dioxide has the chemical symbol CO2, water we know is H2O, and oxygen as always will exist as a diatomic molecule. The only one that you'll need to remember specifically for this equation is glucose, which has the chemical formula C6, H12O6. And glucose, like all sugars, is a carbohydrate, meaning that it's made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. We can balance this equation by adding sixes in front of everything apart from glucose. And if you look carefully, you'll see that this equation is now balanced. When talking about photosynthesis, it's really important to remember that light is needed. So again, we'll write this over the reaction arrow. So we've seen that plants take in carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. So what happened to this oxygen? after this process began to happen. At first, some of the oxygen produced reacted with metals in the Earth's crust in order to form metal oxides. A metal oxide forms in a simple reaction between the metal and oxygen. And if you've seen our videos on extracting metals, you'll know that many useful metals are contained within the Earth's crust in this oxide form. This process carried on until most of the metals that were reactive enough to be oxidised had already undergone the process. Remembering that the metal is oxidised gains oxygen in order to form the metal oxide. After this point, oxygen was still being produced by plants and therefore free oxygen, which is what we call oxygen that just exists as the diatomic molecule on its own, began to accumulate in the atmosphere, leading to a rise in oxygen levels. All the processes that we've been talking about so far will have taken place over millions of years and the Earth is 4.54 billion years old. Therefore, 200 million years is a relatively short time span in the lifetime of the Earth. At this point, 200 million years ago, the atmosphere reached a composition which is similar to what we see today, which, as we saw in the first part, is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and less than 0.1% of any other gases. The atmosphere formed long before any humans were around to observe it. Therefore, what scientists need to do is to develop a theory in order to explain or predict what the early atmosphere was like, how it formed, and how it developed into the atmosphere that we have today. We can't directly observe what happened, so we need to look at evidence. There are four important pieces of evidence that we can think about when discussing how our atmosphere was formed. First of these is volcanoes. In our video on the early atmosphere, we saw that it contained high levels of carbon dioxide and water because these were gases that were emitted during the eruption of volcanoes. We still have volcanoes today, and the gases that are released when volcanoes erupt today will be very similar to the gases produced when volcanoes were erupting billions of years ago. Therefore, if a volcano erupts, we can look at the gases that are produced, giving us an idea of what gases would have been released by the volcanoes that erupted when the Earth's crust was forming. Secondly, we can look at the atmosphere of other planets. Specifically, the atmosphere of planets where no life exists. It's thought that the first organisms appeared on the Earth about a billion years after its formation, suggesting that we might have had a billion years in which the atmosphere didn't provide conditions that could support life. We can therefore look at the atmosphere of planets such as Mars and Venus, allowing us to think about what the atmosphere of Earth might have been like before any life evolved. For example, in this diagram, we can see the composition of the Earth's atmosphere, which, as we've discussed, is 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. On the right hand side we have a pie chart showing the atmosphere of Mars, which does have some nitrogen shown in blue and some other gases, but it's 96% carbon dioxide. Similarly, our right hand side pie chart shows us Venus's atmosphere, which also contains nitrogen, but has an even higher proportion of carbon dioxide at 98%. The observation of such high levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of other planets supports the idea that the Earth's early atmosphere could also have been made up of such a high level of carbon dioxide. This is supported by the fact that some simple organisms, which are the oldest organisms discovered, 
such as bacteria, use carbon dioxide in order to release energy, rather than oxygen, which is used by more complex animals. If these organisms, such as bacteria, were some of the first to form on Earth, around 3 billion years ago, it makes sense that they would have had to have used the high level of carbon dioxide in order to produce energy. Finally, we can predict when oxygen appeared in the atmosphere by looking at the ages of rocks, specifically metal oxides such as iron oxides. Age of these rocks indicates to us when there was enough oxygen in the atmosphere in order to react with the metal present in the Earth's crust in order to form these oxides. If we find a metal oxide that's 220 million years old, we know there must have been oxygen in the atmosphere 220 million years ago, allowing us to get a much more complete picture of what gases have been present at which point and how their concentrations or relative amounts have changed over time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing GCC chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the stat revised smiley face and together let's make GCSE chemistry a walk in the park.